good morning learners uh thank you so much for all the encouraging messages uh thank you that you appreciate my effort i'm also very happy that you have strength and you really want to pass don't forget that for you to pass you have to work hard don't give up yet because if anybody else can pass why not you just try hard so today i want to welcome you to this lesson please pay attention as i'm going to uh, take you through on what exactly you should know so that you tackle your final examination um, correctly you have to know the aspects that are going to be requested of you to answer in your question paper please let's pay attention okay for continuous writing, you need to know all the following um, kinds of writing. Let us quickly go through them and just revise the basic things about them that you really have to put into consideration when you are writing your final examination, okay? We are starting with a diary entry. Do you still know your diary entry? With a diary entry, don't forget about the date in full on the top right corner of your page the diary entry is mostly written in present tense because we assume that you are writing your diary entry the same day the event or whatever you are writing about is happening but study the question to determine the correct tense your prompts will obviously tell you what tense to use if the prompt say what was happening then obviously you are going to write in past in past tense because was is directing you to past tense okay do not start with dear diary rather start with emotion corresponding to whatever you are writing about okay cover the prompts and note avoid listing in whatever kind of writing you are going to write please avoid listing to list is when you just mention a prompt. Let us say you are asked to, uh, you have a prompt which is saying, how did your birthday party make you feel? Then you say, the, birth the birthday party made me feel good. That is listing. You know, it's a prompt just mentioned. So good, how? What happened there? So please avoid listing, okay? And your diary entry with the best words describing how the day ended or and with what you learned from the experience yeah you know with every kind of writing your prompts should direct you on how to start how to end what is important is to answer the prompts let us move on to the book review book review or movie review or film review with a book review, you need a title of the book. You start with the title of the book, the name of the author, or the playwright. If your book is a novel, a storybook, you have to have a title and the name of the author. If the book you read was on poetry, poems, that means you are going to have the title of the book and the, play, the playwright. Okay? If it's a movie, title of the movie, and the movie director. That is how you start. It should be in quotation marks. The topic, I'm saying that you have to have a, a title of the book. So your title of the book needs to be in the quotation marks. Because every title of the book is supposed to be in quotation marks. That is the rule. But you won't be penalized if you forget this. But a clever learner will always write according to how things should be done. Tell whether the book is a fiction or non-fiction. Fiction is when something is not true, when the story is not true. Eh? Non-fiction is when the story is true. Go and find the difference between these two. Talk about the characters. You have to know the protagonist, the antagonist, the plot line. These are literal terms. These are terms from, from literature. These are terms from literature. You need to know them, the protagonist, antagonist, plot line, and many other things. So go and find out. It's not me to explain to you today. That is your research, okay? 
Give setting when and where. When did the story happen? Where? You know, that is what we call setting. And cover the prompts. You guys are so lucky because in everything that you do, you are going to be given the prompts. And answering the prompts is all that matters. Avoid listing. To list is when you give ideas and you are not developing them. Eh? So please, if you mention an idea, develop it. If you mention a prompt, develop the prompt. Okay? You may conclude by giving recommendation. Say why people need to see or read the book. Why do people need to see the movie? Why do they need to read the book? So please go and do just that on the book review. Do you know the formal letters? Formal letters. Formal letters. With your formal letters, you have to know the complaint letter, request letter, covering letter, which is also sometimes called the business letter, and letter to the editor. Are you getting me? I'm saying that you should know those kinds of letters. Let us look at a complaint letter. A complaint letter is a formal letter which complain about a service you are not happy with. If you buy shoes from Ackermans, then to get home you realize the shoes are tattered and torn, you can write a letter of complaint to whoever is responsible or whoever is leading that store. We have a request letter. A request letter, you are asking for help or you are asking for service to be offered in your favor. Let's say there's an outbreak of COVID-19 in your area. You may write to the Ministry of Health requesting for them to send us um, nurses or health officials to come and assist you are requesting for help or there's a shortage of water in your area you may write a letter of request to the ministry of um, is it water and forestry to the responsible ministry so that they can send you those who deal with such an issue we have a covering letter this is a brief letter that accompanies your cv when applying for a job or applying for further study, or just looking for a school. It is also known as a business letter. That was clear. Then we are moving on to the letter to the editor. A letter to the editor can be a letter of complaint, request, or appreciation, or even giving advice. Because when you write a letter to the editor, it's either you are complaining about something that you read in the newspaper, or you are appreciating, maybe you read a good article which was written by a certain individual and you really appreciate that. So you are writing to the editor an appreciation letter or even giving advice. If you have read about an article which you are not happy about, you can always complain, writing your letter to the editor, complaining, or write a letter of appreciation the editor of a certain newspaper has been publishing very uh, informative um, articles, so you want to appreciate. You can always send a letter of appreciation, appreciation or even giving advice and so forth. At most, this letter, the letter to the editor, is written after you have read a certain article that you wish to respond to. Or when you want to bring a certain idea to the want to bring a certain idea to the attention of a newspaper edit of to the attention of an editor of a certain newspaper. So when you are writing your letter to the editor, please cover the prompts and avoid listing. By now you know what listing is, isn't it? Remember th remember this about formal letters. Remember the following things about formal letters. If your answer sheet has begun with dear, just insert or put the appropriate salutation. This means add, say, or madam. If it's a letter to the editor, just add, say, or madam to dear. Do not write dear editor 
but rather, dear sir or madam. However, you won't be penalized for using dear editor. It's just that it's not appropriate, but if you write it, you may not or you may. You may not uh, be penalized for, for that, okay? Let's assume you have your question paper. Do not write the addresses below the salutation, especially if the answer sheet has already begun with dear. I don't know. How... What I'm trying to say is, look here. This is, let's assume that this is your answer sheet. You can see here there is dear already. Eh? What you need to do is simply to add sir or madam. Then it reads dear sir or madam. Or you can add dear, it, there is dear already. Eh? You can add sir so that it reads dear sir. So what I'm also saying about the letter to the editor, I'm saying there is already dear. You just add either sir or madam. But I don't advise you to write dear editor. And I said... If you wish it that way, it's up to you. You may be penalized or you may not be penalized. Because all I know is that the appropriate way is to write dear, sir, or madam. Because this is just a formal letter like any other. And please, if your page has started with dear, there's no need for you to cancel dear. Then you start putting the addresses. Or just leaving dear, then you put the addresses down here. It's not needed. In whatever kind of letter if you have dear just start with your salutation then you start answering your prompts okay so the addresses those are knowledge that you have to use when you are writing formal formal letters let's say when you are out of school or anywhere else it's just a format it doesn't mean that you have to cut out dear then you put your addresses down or things like that I'm sure that is clear after the salutation, have a short topic about the subject to be discussed in the letter. For instance, reference, this is standing for reference, and we write it re, complaint about service, or you can have re, position for training coordinator. You see, there's a subject. The reader will know that, oh, this letter is going to complain about a certain service. So he will go through knowing that this is a letter of complaint or a reposition for training coordinator. The reader will know already that, oh, this person is looking for a job and many other. In this kind of letter, formal letters, there are no greetings. Please go straight to the prompts. You know, I don't want, I don't, I really don't understand how learners think sometimes. You find someone is greeting, hey, good afternoon, say, I'm on my knees on the floor trying to apply for a job for what, what. Ugh. Come on, this is a formal letter. You don't even know the person you are writing to. Okay, just go straight to the point. For example, I am writing to express. Hmm? Or I am writing to inform you about what, 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 what. And be also, also be careful with when you are writing your cover letter, which is a business letter. At most you write it when you are applying. You want to describe yourself so much. I am a Beatal, a grade 12 learner at Shakuti Shakuti Senior Secondary School. I am tall. I'm a hard worker. I'm applying for a post of what, what. Don't forget that the number of words. It's just going. The clock is ticking. The minutes are going. The hours are going. You are wasting time on things which are not needed. Read your prompts and answer what the prompts are asking you to write about. Okay? When writing your formal letter, use formal language. For instance, for instance, I am kindly requesting you or I am humbly requesting you or I would like to inquire. These are all formal language. This is a formal language. You cannot just say, I am asking you, or I'm, I'm telling you, and things like that. Try to be formal. Use polite language even when complaining. Please do not forget your manners. Do not leave your manners at home here. Yeah? Be constructive and not negative. 
For instance, you cannot say, do something about it. Uh, you cannot start, you know, quarreling at someone in the letter that you are sending. People may think that you have issues with other things, not actually the service which was rendered to you. You rather suggest what you would like to see done, not just to say, do something. What if something that they did is, what only, is, is only what they could do? Maybe they have already done something. So suggest. Avoid abbreviation, for instance, as soon as possible, ASAP. Someone may not understand this, or F-I-Y, for real. What? Avoid abbreviations, okay? Avoid insults. You know, I talked about shoes which you bought from Akilman's. To go home, you found the shoes are so tattered and broken. You cannot write to someone saying, what the hell is going on with your shop? Huh? What kind of nonsense is this? I know you are very angry, you might be disheartened, but a professional someone like you can never just say some of those words. Really, when I'm marking, I meet some of unkind words from you guys, and it's uncalled for. Try to be polite here. Avoid contraction. For instance, this word such as can't, wouldn't, I'll. Do not write them in contraction. Just write in full. Can't is cannot, would not, will not. There's no harm in doing that. So that your work is clear. Check spellings and punctuation, okay? Conclude properly. When writing to a known individual, end by your sincerity. Let us say you are writing to Mr. Thompson, the manager of Ackermans. If you say, dear Mr. Thompson, then you are writing to somebody that you know. Or if you write saying, dear sir, then you assume that the company, the manager of that company is a man. That's why you say it, dear sir. That means you know the person, or dear madam, or dear Miss, dear Miss Abiatal. Maybe I'm a manager at a big company somewhere. That means you know me, so you end by your sincerity. And when writing to an unknown individual, end by yours faithfully. If you have started by saying, dear sir or madam, you are assuming that the person may either be a man or a woman, meaning that you don't know whom you are writing to. So you end by yours faithfully. Or any other formal ending, such as yours truly, etc. These are the formal endings, okay? Do you still remember a friendly letter? It's about a friendly letter. We are saying, if your answer sheet has begun with dear, please add the name of the person you are writing. For instance, dear Uncle Tom, dear Martha, dear Aunt Lulu, dear Mom. You know, here, it's clear. You can say dear Mom. You don't need a name because you only have one mother. But you cannot say dear friend or dear uncle because you may have a lot of uncles and you may have a lot of friends. We want to know whom you are really directing this letter to. So please make use of a name, okay? Choose correct friendly words depending on the letter's purpose. You cannot be excited to write to your friend who lost her mom. You have to watch what you start, how you start your letter. Maybe your friend just lost her mother last week and you are writing to her. You cannot say, I'm so excited to write to you. What are you excited about? Come on, I'm mourning my mom and you are there excited. Know the words to you. Sometimes you just copy because Madam had given you an example, a letter with an example starting, I'm excited, you want to use excited everywhere. It's, it doesn't work like that. And you can't be sad when invited to your friend's birthday or when you are inviting your friend to the birthday i am sad to invite you to my birthday please know the meaning of words you can't have mixed feelings when you are a best learner and writing to your friend telling her how to be a top achiever i'm with mixed emotions to write to you oh, learners please first before you use the word make sure that you know the meaning Hey, you cannot have mixed feelings because you are going for the birthday. What is, what is happening? 
Mm? Do not be a copycat. A copycat is that cat which just copy every trick that it see the neighbor doing. So please know the perfect words. Eh? And in this letter, the friendly letter, do not forget to greet and give the purpose of your letter in the introduction. In a friendly letter, you greet wisely. Not just that thing of, how are you? Back to me, which back to you? How are you? I'm very fine. It's like you are talking to yourself. Have a constructing greeting. I'm pleased to write to you. I hope I find you well. I am writing to tell you that you know like a good learner. Not just, how are you? Back to me, I'm fine. The weather condition is very hot. Uh, it's my birthday tomorrow. Are you coming? Things like that. Come on. Please be clever. Cover all the prompts. Conclude properly. For instance, best wishes, Abiatal. Kind regards, Abiatal. Your friend, Abiatal. Something like that. Let us move on to an article. An article, I'm going to discuss it together with an editorial because an editorial and an article are almost the same. All you need to do is to have a short heading, which you call a title or a topic. This short heading must be eye-catching, okay? For instance, you can have your topic as impacts on COVID-19, littering in our area, importance of education, benefits of a balanced diet, or any other. You can be given these topics or you can formulate your own topic. Are you getting me there? After your topic, you can have your byline immediately below the topic. For instance, this is your topic, Impact of COVID-19 by Anne Abiatau. If you want, you can add the date on your name here. If you don't want, it's not a, a big deal because obviously you would have started with a date on top of your page. Please cover the prompts. Please cover the prompts when you are writing your article. These prompts, this, the prompt, these prompts are provided to the core learners and the new curriculum. You have guided a writing and an article may be part of the guided writings. So if you are an extended learner, this may be an argumentative article. So choose your stance. Your article, if you are an extended learner, your question paper may come with um, a topic or with a background information and some comments or some points. For instance, we have here, bullying at school seems to be a, a, gr a growing problem. Many people argue that we must let our children fight their own battles. Then you see this comment here. Eh? Children can't concentrate in class because they are bullied. Children must learn to fed for themselves, the world outside school is hard and children must learn to stand on their own feet. Children who are bullied drop out of school. And then it says, write an article for a school magazine giving your opinion. You, must, you may use some of these ideas as well as your own ideas. Your article must be approximately 200 words in length. Right, here you are given comments. Now you have to write in, um, an article. You can have a short topic, bullying at schools, or bullying at school. Then, from these comments, you have to choose the side that you think you understand very well and you have many points. So, bullying at school is your topic, you underline. Then your byline. A byline is your name. If you want, I said you can add your date. If you don't want, it's up to you, but the byline needs to be there. We have to know who wrote this kind of article. Hmm? then you can choose whether you are supporting what these comments are saying or you are opposing what the comments are saying. If you are not understanding me well, go and uh, watch the lesson on articles. I'm sure there's one for extended there. And I'm saying from the comments or notes given, identify the side you have many points and should correspond to your reasoning. Are you supporting or against 
the topic. Make your side or points clean, clear, please. Make your side or points clear. For instance, you want to say that education is important. Then you start. Education is important because it is the key to success. Then you follow. It is important, but you know, there are also people who can succeed without being educated. For instance, who, 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 and who. You see, now you are contradicting yourselves. Choose a side that you have many, many points, and please do not confuse yourself. If you want, you can have your article on that one side that you have chosen. If you don't want, you can write in the appropriate manner. The appropriate manner is when, after supporting the side that you have chosen, you come to a however part. At however part, you just need to give a short explanation of the other side of the question, but you should not be pushed out of your stance. You said education is the key to education um, is the key to success, meaning that you are supporting education. If you are educated, you are capable of getting a good job, you will have a good life because you will afford to do this and that. You will even have knowledge in this and that. You are talking about how important education is there and you are supporting that it's important. Towards the end, you can have the however part. Although other people think that education is not the key to success, I still believe that the only way to succeed education, you know, you are still supporting, okay? Or you can say, although there are a few number of people who have succeeded, succeeded although not educated, we must all understand that for you to go to greater heights, you have to be educated. Because even if you go around counting the number of people who have succeeded without education, they are a few meaning that you have to be educated so that you are competitive in your country or in the world. Right. In conclusion, for new curriculum, core and extended, this is applying to both of you to conclude your article, you have to find best concluding words, such as, in a nutshell, finally, in the end, to conclude with, etc. You know, just have where you are concluding, okay? And you are using best words. And please do not end by last but not least. Some people want to say last but not least. When you say last but not least, you are, you are not yet at the conclusion. If you say last but not least in the final paragraph, I'll still be waiting for another small paragraph to come by, to conclude, okay? Use those correct concluding words to give emphasis on the already presented ideas. You may avoid to bring new ideas in conclusion. You cannot tell us another story in conclusion, please. Just a round up. To round up is to emphasize on what you have said already. Okay, look at this guy here. His name is called Mr. Speech, number six. I hope you still remember the speech. A speech, with a speech, you have to start with a short topic. It's not compulsory, but you know myself, I'm a very organized learner. Whatever I write, I put a small topic, except at summary writing for extended. Because if I have a small topic, then I know what is going to be, to be said in whatever I'm going to read. So a short topic for a speech, for instance, farewell greeting. This is if maybe you are asked to address others on your last day at school. You can have a short topic for a greeting. You know, then you just underline, underline it nicely and tanta and smartly you go. In your introduction for the speech, you are always greeting and telling us who you are and the purpose in short. Maybe three to four lines, okay? After your greetings, your introduction of who you are and the purpose, you should make sure that you now cover the prompts. You cover the prompts and thank the audience in conclusion. 
the speech a speech is the most easiest thing to write if you just write a speech just get if it's 10 out of 10 100 percent at that part if it's 20 out of 20 if it's 100 out of 100 yes i know you'll make it just follow the rules okay let us move on to number seven let us look at this lady this lady is called mrs report how do we write a report? A report needs a short title. Yes, it should be eye-catching too. A short title. You get a background information. You were on your way to school, then a car accident happened, a hundred people died, what, 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 what. Then you can have a short topic. Maybe you can say um, an accident claimed lives of many. Hmm? At least five words or below. Or many perished in a car accident. You see how you can play around with, with you know, that background information. I know you can do it better than me. Myself, I'm very old, you see. But I know you'll do better than me. Just make sure that your title is short and eye-catching. You should have your byline. Choose whether you want to put it below the topic or below your report. You understand what a byline is, eh? Immediately after the topic, or if you want to put it when you are done with writing your report. But I see danger if you want to put it after writing your report, because you'll forget. So my advice is, write your topic, then you put it right below, so that you don't forget it. Cover the prompts, and note, your first prompt may introduce to the reader the W or W questions. You have to introduce the W questions, which are when, where, what, and the who. Obviously, even if you don't know about, you didn't know about the W questions, obviously your <laughs> report has to have it, knowingly or unknowingly, because you have to tell us when, it was on when, when, where, on the road or, you know, between whatever, what happened, car accident, you know, two BMWs or whatever you are going to lie to us about, then who? You see, that is what the W question is talking about. In your conclusion, at most, it's always about the recommendation. It's either the recommendation or the resolution. For, um, for a report, at most, it's always, add an S here, it's always about the recommendation or resolution. A recommendation is when you say, I recommend the same event to happen. Maybe it was a school farewell party or something, or Miss Winter and things went so well, now you are recommending it to be redone again at school. A resolution is how did you resolve the problem there? Maybe there was an accident. What happened at the end of the day? Were the dead bodies ferried to the mortuary? Or maybe someone broke into the house when he was caught? What happened? He went to the police station and investigations are still taking place or what? So at most is the recommendation or the resolution. And what I'm advising to do, you to do is just to attend to the prompts. Because really it's the prompts which are going to let you answer the question. And please do not leave the story hanging do not leave your story hanging tell us about either the recommendation or the resolution how do you achieve this by answering the prompts okay for all these kinds of writing please make sure that you avoid repetition avoid the repetition of one idea water is life hey, you know life is water and if you don't have it, you may die because water is life. Yeah? <laughs> Just imagine a whole paragraph is written or is, is made up of water is life. And if you don't have it, know that life is water. You may just die because life depends on water. Jesus Christ. Avoid the repetition of one idea, okay? Education is important because it's the key to success. For you to succeed, you need education because it's the key. <laughs> why do you guys do that and please avoid funny words such as bombastic words 
urination, you want to say maybe to urinate or something, I don't know. Then you are the urination, urination eating and urity, urity. Ah, please, if you cannot write the word, leave it out. No vocabulary. So that you can interchange one word, but you know, you are using different words, which means the same thing. I've sent you the synonyms, the antonyms, the homonyms, homophones, homographs. You know all those things, okay? Now, look here. A clever learner by now will have this kind of table. Your table is saying what to know before the exam. And today we discussed continuous writing. If you are going to write grade 12, core and extended, or if you are going to write grade 11, new curriculum, these things are yours. Core and extended, new curriculum, do you know the diary entry? Yeah, boo. I give myself a big tick. Do you know the book review? Yes. At this moment, do you know form, formal letters? Yeah, boo. Do you know the friendly letter? Yes, there's no S here. And do we know the article, how to write the article? Yeah, boo. Do we know how to write the edit editorial? Yeah, boo. The speech? Yes, why not? The report, yes, Mr. Biatal has taught me. I did. All the videos are there. Go, just go and revise. And please know the, uh, the essays. Know the narrative. To narrate is to tell a story. This is a narrative essay where you are telling a story. The day you will never forget. You know, you are telling a story. You are narrating. Know about the descriptive essay. To describe is to give detailed information. In the argumentative essay, that article which comes for extended, whereby you have to argue, you take one side, you tell us your opinions. If you want, you can also divert to the other side to a less extent, but not forgetting your own ideas. Do you know it? Yebo. Narrative essay and descriptive essay, go and Google or search on them because you've been taught this thing since grade one. Then, additional for new curriculum. Meaning that new curriculum, if you are going to write grade 11, uh, second language, English second language, you have to know this whole list. Then you come to these additional ones. How to write an email, how to write a blog, how to write a WhatsApp chat, how to write a brochure, a CV, and even a dialogue. You just don't know what the examiner is going to ask you. But please be on the safe side and know all these things. In the next lesson, we are going to learn what we need to do the other parts of the question paper. Scanning and skimming, keywords, spotting answers from the question paper, the fill-in part, and all those. Okay? Thank you so much for paying attention. Please keep on working hard. Uh, you know, just answer correctly. Employ those tactics and any other that you think that can help you to pass, okay? Bye-bye. Have a good day.